Hello. What I'd like to talk about this time is shot noise and how it affects our astronomical images. So shot noise really is the uncertainty with measuring pretty much anything with a CCD camera. Uh, it's, it's associated with the, the quantum processes associated both in the generation of the photons and in the conversion of those into electrons within the camera. So if we have a part of the sky that we are expecting to get 50 photons from, we might expect from those 50 photons to generate 40 electrons. Uh, in one given period of time, we might get those 40 electrons. Then the next time we come to measure, we might get 35 electrons. The next time it might be 45 electrons. There's always that kind of uncertainty associated with it. Uh, on the slide we've got here, that then is represented by what's a flat field all the pixels are illuminated evenly, we might then expect to all the pixels to have the same value. But they don't. They have this histogram. Uh, the histogram actually gets wider as the illumination gets higher. Uh, and this is, this is shot noise. A shot noise is actually associated with the square root of the actual signal level itself. Uh, though shot noise increases with increasing signal, it actually increases more slowly than the increasing signal. So if we look at the ratio of signal to noise regarding shot noise, then the signal to noise ratio increases, gets better with increasing signal. Okay, uh, one, one thing that's related to this is an idea that the measures, pretty much all astronomers will have at some time when imaging from light polluted areas is why don't we just subtract the light pollution from the image? So if we're imaging a piece of sky, light polluted area, we might have a value of 10,000 on all, all the pixels might get 10,000 worth of background counts. It would be easy just to subtract 10,000 from all those pixels and expect we'd then have an image that would correspond to a dark sky location. Uh, it doesn't work out that, and it doesn't work out because of shot noise. Uh, and this next couple of pictures just kind of demonstrates that. So these are two pictures. They were taken about 30 minutes apart. Uh, they were a piece of sky. The intensity of the stars is actually pretty pretty similar on the, or pretty much identical on the two images. But what's different is the background. So in the second image, uh, the moon was coming up and the sky was becoming brighter. So on the one on the left, we have a background of around 8,000 counts. And on the right, we have about 11,000 counts. So following this through, all we've got to do is remove 8,000 from every pixel on the left and 11,000 from every pixel on the right. And then we have pretty much the same image. So if we do that, and then maybe we put a linear stretch through to about 3,500 counts to start to reveal the nibbler underneath. Well, what we see is the image on the left, taken from the darker sky, we actually see quite a lot more detail in that image. So there is fainter parts of the nibbler that are visible and the image on the right just appears to have more noise in the background. And again, we can see that on the histograms underneath where the noise, that sharp noise, is actually a bigger, it produces a bigger, broader peak on the background on the right-hand image. So that's sharp noise. Uh, the only real way of avoiding uh, these detrimental effects of background sharp noise is by making the backgrounds darker. By traveling to a dark sky location, uh, we can introduce nebula filters or narrowband filters if we are imaging from a light polluted area or light pollution filters can be useful as well. Uh, if we're imaging brighter objects and we want to make sure we've got the most signal to noise ratio, the, the best quality signal, then we want to be imaging for taking as longer exposures as possible so as collecting as many photons uh, from that area as we can before we saturate the sensor because we know that as signal is increasing the shot noise is decreasing at the square root of the signal which is at a slower rate than the than the signal. Uh, so, so that means that cameras with a bigger full well depth are more able to take advantage of these longer exposures. Okay, I hope that's been useful. Thank you for watching.